Welcome to Wasteland 2. This has been a very long time coming. The original Wasteland actually came out in 1988. And from it spawned the Fallout franchise, which was actually a spiritual successor to Wasteland. And now, about 25 years later, we finally have Wasteland 2. And it's been made by In Exile Entertainment, which was a company that was actually founded by Brian Fargo, who actually worked on the original. And there's actually a bunch of team members that also worked on the original that were involved in the development of Wasteland 2, so that is quite cool. I'm really excited to jump into this. And you know, I actually haven't played the original Wasteland, so I don't have any sort of nostalgic connection to it. But when I was younger, I did play through Fallout 1 and 2, and freaking loved them. So even though these series are not the same, they are different series, but Fallout was definitely heavily inspired by Wasteland, so I feel like it's going to scratch the same itch. Alright, this is going to be the start of a very, very long journey, because this game is apparently 50 plus hours long. It is really, really long. I am probably going to be playing this for literally months, and I can't wait. I'm going to savor every single minute of it. So since this is the start of a very long journey, I think the first thing we should do is just get familiar with our characters. But before I do that, I should also mention that I typically play games mostly blind. That's usually what I do. I'll usually go into the game for a little bit to kind of get familiar with uh, the controls and, you know, make sure it works and tweak the settings and stuff like that. But in this case, I have not done that, actually. What I've done is actually played it for about eight plus hours. Although, to be honest, probably half of that was spent in the character creation screen. But still, I've played it for a good amount, and the reason for that is because it's a very complicated game. It's huge, it's sprawling, it's complicated. So I, I felt like coming into it blind would have been just a complete catastrophe. So I've spent a lot of time tweaking my characters, and there are a bunch of pre-made characters to select from, of course. But I figured I'm going to be spending so long in this game, I want it to be really special, you know? I want my cast of characters to be... to feel like mine. So, I've made a cast of characters that are completely, completely custom. In every way. Including the portraits, which I'll actually talk about soon. But uh, first, let's just get familiar with them. So, first up, we have Harper Overton. At an early age, Harper decided he liked the company of computers more than people. Over the years, he's made a living by hacking. There are few computers he can't break into. The sun is his mortal enemy, and he does everything he can to keep its poisonous rays from his delicate skin. So, he's my computer hacker dude. So let's look over these stats and see what I've tried to do with him. First, let's start with the skills, actually. So the basic kind of idea for each character and their skills is basically give them at least one main weapon and then for some of them, for two of them actually, I have them have a secondary weapon for various reasons that I'll go over and then after that give them like two to three secondary skills that are helpful so everybody's gonna be a fighter, you know, everybody's gonna have a main weapon that they're pretty good at but then they also have a two to three skills that will just generally help the group in their their day-to-day -day stuff and I didn't want to spend my skill points, uh, spread my skill points too thin because if you do that you'll never become a master of anything, and you'll just quickly be left in the dust, unable to face the challenges that the higher levels will throw at you. You can kind of see how the system works here. See, it says, like, uh, next level give me 10% versus challenge level 5. So, you know, if you don't upgrade a skill pretty high, then the later game stuff is going to be basically impossible for you to solve. So you definitely want to specialize. So he's my computer hacker. He's also good at lockpicking, because he just likes to get into areas where people don't want him. And he's good with assault rifles. Assault rifles are good kind of all-purpose weapons, you know, they're pretty good at long range, very good at medium range, and then... I, I guess okay at short range. So, nice all-purpose weapon. Looking over here at the attribute points, the uh, starting skill level, by the way, or sorry, starting attribute point level for all of these things is 3. So, coordination has been slightly leveled. And the reason for why I've picked some of these skills 
is not just because of the kind of character they are, but I've also kind of picked skill level points, or sorry, attribute point levels that are kind of key, because... So for example, coordination. If you have this at an odd number, like 3 or, or 5, it's kind of inefficient. So if you look, if I upgrade this to 4, to an even number, I get an action point, as well as a greater chance to hit with ranged weapons. But if I was to give it one more point up to 5, the only thing it does is it gives me 1% chance to hit with ranged weapons. But then if I go to 6, it gives me another action point. So there's kind of key levels where if you hit a certain number, it's it's good and efficient, but if you don't, it's kind of a waste. So I've just I've kind of tried to hit certain numbers that are particularly good. Uh, luck I've taken one point out of, because from what I've heard, luck is apparently kind of a dump stat, not too important. And I felt like it would be better used somewhere else. Awareness is important for, uh, especially for initiative in combat, which is a skill that is probably more important than you might think. So, I, I kind of assumed when I first started playing that action points were, were king. You know, get as many action points as possible so I can just, like, shoot everybody in one turn. But that's not really a very good idea, I think. And the reason is because combat initiative basically decides how often you can take a turn. So it's not just a, it's not just a set, um, a set kind of turn roster where it's like one person goes, next person goes, next person goes, and it's just, like, even. Like, everything's perfectly even. No, some people can actually go more often. And that is dependent on their combat initiative. So, for example, I believe how it works is, let's say you're fighting a bunch of enemies. And they all have a combat initi initiative of 10. And you have a combat initiative of 15. I think that means you're basically going to have a turn 50% more often than they do. Because you have 15 compared to their 10. I think that's how it works. So it's pretty damn important. So that's why I've upgraded Awareness so much. Because this is the most important stat for initiative. Strength is a skill that's not particularly important for his class. However, it's another one of those things where if you hit a key point, it becomes particularly good. So if you hit an even number, it's very nice. The key thing being that... Let's see... Yeah, the key, the key difference between hitting an even number and an odd number is that if you hit an even number, it gives you more constitution per level. Whereas if I put another point up to five, it would not. It's still pretty good, but putting one point is more valuable than putting two. Speed is also the same thing. I've hit the, the sweet spot at four. He is quite intelligent, since he is a computer hacker after all, which gives him more skill points per level. And some other stuff. Apparently the ability to read high-level books, whatever that means, I don't know what books are about. And just an average number of charisma. And that is Harper Overton. Alright, let's take a look at Helen Veronese. You can't get hurt if your enemies are dead before they even see you. And that's Helen's attitude, and it has served her well. So she is my sniper. Once again, she has three points in sniper rifles, so that's her main skill. She has one point in handguns, so she actually has a secondary, unlike Harper. And the reason for that is because Harper has an assault rifle, which is good at... Uh, decent at most ranges. However, snipers are of course only good at long range. They're absolutely horrendous up close. So I felt it was particularly important to give her a secondary weapon. Because you get attacked by all sorts of different enemies, right? Some have melee only, or some aren't even human. You know, they're bugs or something that go up to attack you. So if an enemy comes up close to her, she needs to be able to defend herself. And then I've also got a couple points into perception and weaponsmithing. So perception is used to find, say, things that are traps or things that uh, things that are of particular interest, basically. It's actually quite important. Uh, weaponsmithing is good for stripping down weapons and using that to install modifications and things of the sort. Another very important skill from what I've heard. She has quite a bit of coordination. For action points, as well as for a greater chance to hit at a range, since she has a sniper. That's uh, particularly important. 
Once again, quite a bit of awareness for initiative. And then once again, hitting the sweet spot for strength and speed. Next up, we have Theodore Flint. Theodore tries to work everything out with kindness and a firm handshake. He'd prefer to have tea with his enemies, but if that fails, he's not adverse to solving the problem with a gun. This is the wasteland, after all. Eventually, you're going to have to solve some problems with a gun. Especially when you're getting attacked by gigantic bugs. They don't like to talk, and they also don't like tea. So he is also an assault rifle guy. That's his only combat skill. And he is also my leader. And that's actually his main role, really. That's kind of his key role, is basically to be the leader for the group, and I just kind of gave him a combat skill so that he would not suck <laughs> during combat. So he's kind of the goody-two-shoes guy, right? He's a kiss-ass, so he's good at talking to people. He's a field medic, good at healing people, and he is the leader. And leadership, by the way, not only increases your... Or rather, reduces the chance that followers ignore orders in combat. Which is good for, um, I, I believe it's only, I think it's only recruited NPCs that have a chance to disobey orders. I think. That might not be true. Uh, but regardless, it makes your people do what you say more often. Which is very important. And it also passively increases the chance of nearby allies to hit. Which is quite nice. It's at 4% just already, which is actually quite a bit. So, once again, he's got the sweet spot for strength. Not the sweet spot for speed, but I kind of dumped more of the stats into intelligence and charisma. Because the, the reason charisma is important is because you need a certain amount of it to recruit certain NPCs. So if you don't have enough charisma, you just won't be able to recruit them. They won't want to join you. So that's mostly what he's about. He's got a lot of intelligence, so he can also upgrade a lot of skills. Which is one of the reasons I've gone for ha him having three secondary skills instead of just two. Since he is going to have more skill points. And finally, we have Yulia Vasiliev. Yulia likes to kill two birds with one shotgun blast. Whether it's from dynamite or a double barrel, collateral damage is a beautiful thing. So she is my shotgunner. Consequently, she has three points in shotguns. I also give her one point in blunt weapons. And the reason for that is... Uh, it's because I kind of have an awkward number of action points for the shotgun. So the shotgun actually takes five action points to shoot, which means with eight action points, she can't shoot twice in one turn. So I wanted something to kind of fill the void, and I believe blunt weapons take about three action points to hit. So five plus three is obviously eight. So that should fill that out nicely, hopefully. Ideally, she could take a shotgun shot, and if she's next to somebody, also hit them at the same time. And another, another reason for having blunt weapons is also because shotguns have a cone of fire, and there is friendly fire. So, finding a good angle to shoot your shotgun from can be kind of tricky. So if, everybody, if all of my people are clumped together, it might be best to use a blunt weapon instead of blasting all of them accidentally in the face. And she's also my demolition person. She likes to blow stuff up, and, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. She likes to blow stuff up. <laughs> Alright, got the sweet spot for coordination. And her stats lean more towards speed and strength. So strength gives her stuff like more more health, which is important because she's going to be close to enemies, so she needs to kind of, you know, be able to withstand their attacks. Strength is also used to wear heavier armor, so that kind of compounds in on itself. Not only does it give you more health, but also allows you to avoid taking more damage because you have better armor. And speed is important for, well, being able to move. Which is particularly important for shotgunners, because once again, you have to be careful with where you shoot so that you don't hit your own people. And you want to make sure that you hit as many of the enemies as possible. Since it is one of the few weapons that can actually hit multiple enemies at the same time. So positioning is key, hence why she has a lot of speed, so she can actually get into a good position. And I think that's about it for the characters. Yeah, so about the portraits, um, the pre-made characters, of course, have their own portraits and all that. And, in fact, for the custom characters, they actually do provide a bunch of portraits. 
uh, that you can use, some of which are used for the pre-made characters, some of which are not. And they look very cool, but the problem is they don't necessarily look anything like the character you make in-game. And... I don't know, I was just thinking, if I'm going to make a, a cast of custom characters, I wanted it to be really special. And another, th another thing you can do is use the Take a Snapshot button, which just takes a screenshot of how they look here, which, you know, it looks okay, but it's not as cool as, you know, something like the official art. But I wanted something special, and something that really fit my particular characters and wasn't, you know, generic. I didn't want to have a portrait that I had to make a character look like. I wanted to make a character and then have a portrait that looked like them. So, what I actually did was commission some. So that's where these came from. Let me find the right one for Helen. There it is. So yeah, I actually commissioned some portraits. They came out really well, and I'm really, really happy with how they look. It just feels so much more special, you know? I mean, I'm going to be with them for 50 plus hours, so... I figured I might as well make them as special as possible. They look damn, damn cool. Something very satisfying about looking at characters that I created with custom art that fits them perfectly. Very satisfying. And uh, yeah, if you want to check out the artist behind the portraits, I will have the information to that in the description. Let's see, anything else? I think it's about time to start. Um, oh yeah, Wasteland 2, I should probably mention, is available on Steam and GOG, as well, a couple of, as well as a couple of other places, I believe. I'll have links to all of that in the description as well. So, this is obviously going to be a fairly slow starting episode, since it's going to be mostly just kind of getting familiar with the characters and, you know, getting into everything. But, uh, you know, it's a 50 plus hour game. It's kind of how it goes. Okay, let's step our feet into the wasteland. I'm going to be playing on the seasoned difficulty. When I originally played this, I actually played it on Rookie, just to get used to the game. Which was indeed very, very easy, so I'm looking for a little bit more challenge this time. So let's see how seasoned is. What comes after the end? I don't know. Neither did they. They were just an army engineer battalion, constructing roads and bridges deep in the middle of the Arizona nowhere. They didn't know why Armageddon had come. They'd heard radio chatter about an attack on some space-based missile platform. But who had attacked it, or why? No one knew. What they did know is that the politicians and the generals had finally ended the world. Now, everything was gone. They took over a federal prison for a fort, kicked out the convicts, got busy starting from scratch. Maybe it was an act of mercy. Maybe they figured that the prisoners would die out in the harsh new world. Whichever, it came back to bite the engineers in the ass. Cultists, criminals, cannibals. They've been living with the fallout ever since. Good people had survived too, called for help in the night. And those engineers, those common soldiers, could not stand by and see them die. So they came out of their fort and they helped the survivors defend their homes. And for that, they earned a new name, 
a proud name, the Desert Rangers. Now, Rangers, I know at times it seems our cause is hopeless, and I know it's hard to say goodbye to a brother in arms. But I want you to know something else. That no ranger who dies in the line of duty will ever be forgotten. Nor will he have ever died in vain. Or unavenged. Thank you, recruits. A stiff, bearded older man wearing a hard-worn ranger uniform and a battered old cowboy hat. General Vargas walks with a cane, but he's not helpless. He wears a pearl-handled revolver on his hip, and there are a lot of notches on the barrel. I appreciate you coming to Captain Ace's retirement party when you hardly knew the man. Appropriate, too, seeing as how investigating his death will be your first duty as a desert ranger. How did Ace die, sir? Ace had been trying to locate a faint radio signal, which has lately been giving us cause for concern. We gave him three repeater units and sent him to hook him up to three remote radio towers. This would have allowed us to get a fix on the signal. But sadly, Ace was murdered by unknown assailants right after hooking up the first tower, and his logbook and the last two repeater units were stolen. You think the logbook was stolen, sir? Don't know, but it wasn't on Ace's person when he was found. Look for it. It might have some clues as to his death. All right. Where are the radio towers? I'll give you the locations of the towers once you have the repeaters in hand. More important to find them first. Fair enough. What about the repeaters? When you get back to the Citadel, talk to our radio expert, Wade Woodson, if you want to know more about the technical details. All I know is the repeaters will upgrade the towers and allow us to zero in on the mystery signal. <laughs> the signal is a threat, sir. The voice on those broadcasts disturbed me greatly. It talked crazy talk about a future where man and machine would be one. Worse, it talked about us, the Desert Rangers, specifically. It said it was coming for us. That doesn't sound good. Man and machine would be one. Happy to be given the opportunity, sir, but are you sure we're ready? Yeah, I know. You've hardly found your feet with us, and here I am sending you on a mission that already got one ranger killed. Well, I wish I had another option, but the Desert Rangers are spread a little thin right now. Ranger teams Abel and Charlie are out west trying to stop a range war out there from becoming straight-up genocide. And Team Baker is up north looking for a way through the radiation that's cut us off from Vegas. I'm afraid the next generation is going to have to lead the charge on this one. All right, what's the mission, sir? The mission is this. Search the area where Ace's body was found and do your best to recover his logbook and the repeater units. Then call in your report. If you find the repeaters, I may send you on to finish his mission. Ace's death must be avenged, and it will be. But finding the signal he died trying to track down is just as important. Besides, I got the sneaking suspicion that when you find the one, you'll find the other. Where is this area, sir? It's about a day's walk east from here. I'll mark it on your map. Radio tower. Okay. There you go. Call in, sir? Yes, call in on your radio. Your radio is your lifeline to Ranger Citadel. 
We'll be calling you with alerts and updates on your current missions and sending you new missions when we receive distress calls. As Rangers, it is your sworn duty to respond to those calls. That is the contract we made with the people of Arizona when we opened for business. When can we enter the Citadel, sir? Once you prove yourself, the Citadel will be your new home. Consider this mission the final test of your training. If you succeed, you are welcome within our walls. If you fail, then you aren't cut out to be a Desert Ranger, and we won't let you in. All right, fair enough. <laughs> you can try to use your various skills in sweet talking to uh, try to convince him. Which uh, I remember doing this before, it has a funny result. Please, sir, if you're sending us after Ace's killer, then you've already decided we're worthy. Why not just let us in? <laughs> Kissing ass already, huh? No, I would never. I totally wasn't just using my kiss ass skill, of which I have one point in. Well, some folks in the waste can be persuaded that way. Not everyone. I've been buttered up by the best of them, so I'm wise to those tricks. You get through our doors with deeds, not words, recruits. Good try, though. Thank you, Vargas. Good luck out there, recruits. Alright. There's Ace's grave. Here lies Ace. Born a man. Died a desert ranger. Also just gonna go ahead and yoink the shovel here. Which will come into handy very soon, as you'll see. Turns out there's many things to dig up. I should actually give the shovel to somebody, put it on their hotbar. Who got it? You? Alright. Let's put it on your hotbar. Wait, no, that's not how you do it. Right click? Yeah, there we go. Uh, wait. I believe I've messed everything up. I dropped it, didn't I? I dropped it. Whoops. Take. Right click. There we go. Alright, let's head out. So, just to get familiar with our starting equipment, I suppose. You do start with a weapon that is appropriate for your skills, so... He's an assault rifle guy, so he starts with an assault rifle and a little bit of ammo. She starts with a sniper rifle. She's also got a bit in pistols, so... Starts with a little... a little handgun. Same with you, assault rifle. And same with you, your shotgun and your barbed wire bat. Which looks really, really nasty. I would not want to get hit with that. Ugh. Thing looks nasty. And by the way, since I set Yulia to be able to... Uh, in her character creation, I set her to have a preferred brand of cigarettes. Which means you actually start with them. And you can actually smoke them. Oh yeah. As if it wasn't hot enough already. God, it's gotta be like 100 degrees out here. Ugh. I should probably actually switch them to their primaries. I don't know why she has her secondary out. Swap weapons, let's reload. Yeah, my sniper has her pistol out. Swap. Wait, what? That's weird. Swap the wrong character. No, what the? Why does it keep swapping that character? I don't have you selected. Stop. I have you selected. You, Helen. Helen. Okay, there we go. Empty. Let's reload. Alright, everybody only has one weapon. We have our primaries out. Okay, let's go. Good to see you, recruits. Afraid I can't open this door for you yet. It's the entrance to the Citadel. Before you rise a great pair, uh, rise a pair of massive 25-foot bronze doors, now green with age and corrosion, and engraved with ancient and barely legible writings. They look like they've been standing since the beginning of time. My god, those are huge, aren't they? And beautiful. I wonder what that is written up there. Yeah, this is a extraordinarily wordy game. In a good way, though, because the writing is extremely good. But uh, for those who have the patience, of which I believe I'm one of them, I think you'll get a lot from reading all the text. You notice he is wearing a humongous double-barreled pistol on his hip. A double-barreled pistol? Whew. I should probably switch to my talker here. He's actually the only guy that actually has any talking skills whatsoever. Ooh, 
he's a lovely looking guy. Nice little improvised melee weapon, it looks like. It looks like he's ready to weld something, what the hell? Welcome to Ranger Citadel, recruits. But the general ordered me not to let you in before you finished your first investigation. So, I could try to lie. But the general ordered us to tell you to let us in. I could. Eh. I'll be good, though. Let's not do that. Alright, fair enough. Catch you later. I don't know, I'm worried Vargas would find out and then, like, s spank me. A kindly older woman is in standard issue ranger garb. She seems occupied counting goods and organizing crates. Aside from the clothes, she's the picture of a loving grandmother. You could swear she smells faintly of fresh baked cookies. Well, hello, recruits. Welcome to Sol Vig's Sundries. Happy to trade whatever you like. An honor to make your acquaintance. Always nice to see new faces around here, and a pleasure to make sure they have everything they need before they head out into a big bad world. <laughs> Gun in one hand, cup of coffee in the other. Nice to meet you too. Sol... How the hell do you pronounce her name? Solvig? What's your story? Oh, it's not so interesting. I grew up in a village near here, but I was already grandmother twice, twice over when the Desert Rangers moved into the Citadel. I saw how much good the Rangers were doing, and I wasn't up to much with my children moved to other villages to start their own families. It was a little unconventional for an old lady to go through basic training, but I pulled my weight and earned my star. I may not be too useful in forward operations, but I've got lots of experience keeping people well fed and well clothed. And I can run a drill press with the best of them. So General Vargas has me help Sergeant Melson run the supply. And I help Captain... Mercaptain in the workshop now and again. The hell kind of a name is Mercaptain? Captain Mercaptain? What's Captain Mercaptain like? She's the smartest person I've ever met, bar none. She can whip up laser beams and water purification systems like I whip up pies. She can whip up water purification systems. You don't say. That would have been helpful in the original Fallouts. Which one? Which Fallout was it that required you to find the... What was it? The, the Gek? The Gecko? I think it was the Gek. Like a water purification chip to something. I don't know. It's all blurring in my memory. Alright, what about the Ranger Citadel? Tell me about it. I do love this place nowadays. It used to be full of some kooky birds back when I was younger. Fellas seemed to worship pre-war junk. Even if they didn't know what it was. And they wouldn't share none of it. Well, I shouldn't get too judgmental. I'm sure they thought they were doing right. Hmm, so, you can outfit us? Well, with essentials as tough to find as they are, I can't just give them away for free. Believe me, I wish I could, but we keep our prices as close to cost as we can for our rangers. You can stop by for the basics whenever you're in the area, and once you get clearance to enter the Citadel, you'll get access to some of our more valuable goodies. You'll have to talk to Sergeant Melson about that when you get inside. What about Sergeant Melson? Oh, he's a great friend, and a great quartermaster. We'd all be eating sand and wiping with cactus flowers without him. Ugh. Wiping with cactus flowers. Please, no. General Vargas, well, I already kind of know what he's like. Alright, what do you have? Uh, Alright, so I have 50 monies, or scrap. Which means I probably can't buy much of anything except a little bit of ammo, I suppose. Ah, oh, interesting. So with weaponsmithing skill, you can put scopes on stuff. Nice, increases range. <laughs> Akita figurine, plus one animal whisperer skill. Yeah, you're about to see some stuff about the animal whisperer very soon. And by that I mean in like, 20 seconds. So, yeah, I can't really afford any of this stuff. I could buy one piece of TNT. No thanks. 
I'm good. All right, goodbye. Lovely to, me lovely to meet you, Team Echo. Come back soon. All right. Yeah, so these people want me to pick up this can over here. Pick up that can! What does this Half-Life do? However... There is... Aberforth to deal with. Who makes some of the most disturbing sounds possible. <laughs> I love that. One of them just literally sounds like a person screaming. Oh my god. And yeah, there is an Animal Whisperer skill. And, uh... If you have any points in it, you can actually talk to animals. And it does actually help you. Of course, since I haven't put any skill points in it whatsoever, I can't actually talk to him, so all he does is scream and make weird noises. <laughs> That's never gonna get old. If I had that figurine, I suppose I would do, but I can't even afford it. But here's the thing about the can. Apparently it's a bad idea to pick it up. It says, uh, tin cans and goats usually go together. Your instincts are telling you that you might not want to steal this goat's next meal. So, given that I can converse with him later, maybe. And it sounds like he's gonna try to kill me if I take it. I'm just gonna leave it. And here's where the shovel comes in handy. Let's see what's in here. <laughs> People bury some incredibly valuable stuff. Assault rifle ammo, okay. Uh, let's go to... Eh, I suppose it doesn't matter as long as it goes to one of our assault rifle people. Let's go to you, distribute the rest, doesn't matter. Just a bunch of junk. Yep, there's more up here. What are you doing? Ooh, some pistol ammo. Who has the pistols? That is you. Helen. Alright, what are you up to? Ranger Brass Nucks. Sorry, can't talk right now. Gotta clean up this graffiti. I wonder what the whole thing said. It says lob or something. Law and order? Something. All right, we're going to be heading out soon, but before that, I believe there's two things left to do. Dig up this and talk to her. Oh, there's actually two things to dig up. We are actually going to recruit her. She can... she'll actually join us. God damn it, Ace. You never should have put down the wrench and picked up the gun. Yeah, we're going to figure out her, her story in just a second. Ooh, dynamite. That will be for you, Yulia. A tough-looking redhead with decades of sun and wind and hard living etched into her angular face stands sobbing in the shadows. You saw her at Ace's retirement party. The sleeves of her uniform have been torn off, revealing multiple tattoos on her sinewy arms. All skulls. The tears running down her cheeks are splashing on a rusty old wrench she holds in her scarred hands. Ah, thanks to Harper Overton's perception bonus. Among the skull tattoos that cover Angela's arms, there's a single heart, and within that heart, a single name, Ace. Yeah, so Ace, who we just buried, was a... Uh, her partner, her lover. Sorry about the waterworks. I'm still pretty broke up over Ace. I'm Angie. You kids must be the new recruits old Vargas trained up. Lord, y'all just babies. Well, thank you very much. I like to think we have youthful skin. Babies. Us. Yeah, so here's one of the, um, kind of awkward things about Wasteland 2. 
some of the dialogue is voiced and some of it isn't. So for Vargas, it seems like everything is voiced with him. But for some of the other characters like her, it, it's just, it seems like the main stuff is voiced, but then the other stuff isn't. It's really weird. So it's kind of on and off, which is uh, a bit awkward. But uh, anyway, sorry, but you are as cute as little kittens. Shall remind me of us. Snake, Razor, Thrasher, and me, back when we were just starting out. Thinking we were going to save the world for the future. Thinking none of us would ever die. I... Christ. Sorry. Don't listen to me. Youth is good. Optimism is good. If we all started out worn out and jaded like me, nobody would ever try to change the world. So, you kids go ahead and give it a go. Maybe it'll work this time. I see you have Ace's name tattooed in that heart on your arm. You... You noticed that, huh? Well, Ace always said I wore my heart on my sleeve. Yeah, me and Ace, we were... more than just old army buddies, if you know what I mean. That's why it hurt so bad. That's why I want to come with you. Um, <laughs> this dialogue option seems to kind of be irrelevant now that we just established that, but, uh... You knew Ace well? Of course you did. Ace wasn't even a ranger. Not at first. He worked as a driver and mechanic for Farron... <laughs> for Farron Brigo. Is, isn't that just um, a jokey, messed up version of Brian Fargo? Farron Brigo? I, I thought I remember reading something about that. Some sort of a joke. I don't know if that's an inside joke or what, but... <laughs> I can't read that with a straight face. Yep, he worked for Farron Brigo up in Vegas. And when Base Cochise well, started sending its death machines into the desert, Brigo sent Ace south to recruit robot fighters. We met him in courts. He'd pissed somebody off out there, and they'd locked him up. We sorted that out, and he started running with us, helping us fight Co Cochise, I don't know how to pronounce that, and never stopped. Vargas eventually just gave him the uniform and the hat. But I don't think he ever formally signed on, he just was always there. And now he's... he's... God damn it, Ace. I knew this one was trouble. I knew it! You thought Ace's mission was trouble? He was working on the same thing Vargas has you working on. Trying to track down radio signals from beyond the edges of the map. All seemed a bit boring and scientific to me, but then Ace started saying he thought someone was following him. I asked him to let me come with him. Uh, when I met him at Rail Nomad and to give him the repeater units, but he told me to go back to base. He said he was just jumping at shadows because those radio broadcasts had spooked him. I should have gone with him. Why didn't I go with him? So many options. Have you heard any of these strange broadcasts? Ace played me some of them before he died. Hard to make out a lot of it, but... What I heard made my hair stand on end. Some guy talking about turning men into machines, or machines into men, or some shit, but the crazy thing was, then he starts talking about us, the Rangers, saying we're the cause of all the trouble in the world, and we need to be wiped out, so his glorious future can be born. I mean, who is this guy? Where is he? And what the fuck does he have against us? Eh, know anything about these repeater units? I really don't know the details. It's all a bunch of mumbo-jumbo about transmitters and north-south axes and signals bouncing off the clouds. Ask Blitzen about it. He's our radio genius. Do you know Woodson? Radio technician Wade Woodson. Sure do. He's the guy that makes sure you can hear Vargas when you're out on patrol. Keeps all the machines running and the signal clear. He'll also talk your ear off about circuits and frequencies, and I, I don't know what else if you let him. But be nice to him. He's your lifeline to the base. Alright, tell me about the Rail Nomad. Uh, Rail Nomad Camp. Could be a nice little place if the Atchitsons and Topicons would kiss and make up. I can't even remember what it's all about, but between them they got enough old railroad tech that if they work together, 
They could give this area a real transportation system. Instead, seems like all they want to do is blow each other's heads off. Idiots. Alright, so these people, uh, Thrasher and Hellraiser and Quartz, I think at least some of them are uh, people that were in Wasteland 1. Like, Hellraiser, I'm, I'm sure of. I'm pretty sure he was in... Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was in there. I'm not sure about the others, but they probably were as well. So these options are probably more for people that actually play the original, but uh, let's at least ask about Hellraiser. He's another one gone. Went out for a patrol a few weeks back and never came home. Don't know if he's dead or AWOL or gone off to join the Scorpions. All anybody knows is he hasn't called in, and we haven't heard from anybody who's seen him. I miss old Hellraiser like blazes. Didn't talk much. Didn't make friends easy. Wasn't big on the social graces. But he was as loyal as they come. And when the shit started flying, he was the guy you wanted at your back. He didn't win that name by accident. Sharp as a razor, scary as hell. The Red Scorpions. You weren't briefed on those fucks during your training? Well, let me fill you in. You know when we left the prison and moved here to the Citadel? Well, the Scorpions were the jerks who moved into the prison when we moved out. Just a bunch of raiders back then. But they've been getting more organized. Call themselves a militia now. And they try to act like they're the Desert Rangers of Eastern Arizona. Well, that's a load of horse shit. Protection racket ain't the same as protecting people. They shake down all their towns for money. And if the locals don't kick in, they smash them up. The Rangers ain't like that. You get by on donations and good old-fashioned scavenging. Eastern Arizona? What if we get to go there at some point? Tell me about it. Basically everything between the prison and the radiation clouds to the east. There's a few small towns and farms out there, which the Scorpions claim as their territory. Rangers used to patrol the area before we moved there, and we knew it pretty well. But a lot can change in 15 years. Who knows? Maybe it's all as clean and nice and crime-free as the Scorpions say it is. But I got my doubts. Wait, so there's radiation clouds? The edges of the map, kiddies. Big hot areas we can't go into without getting cooked to a crisp. The clouds move around with some with the wind and weather, but there are permanent hot spots on every side of us. North, south, east, and west. Until we started hearing those weird broadcasts, I kind of thought these clouds went on forever, and that Arizona was the last place on Earth. But maybe there's more people out there. Maybe the whole rest of the world's just fine and we're the only ones in hell. Wouldn't that be a joke? Wait, so... General Vargas used to be called Snake? Huh, <laughs> yep. It was one wild-ass son of a bitch back in the day. But I think the weight of his responsibilities have kind of squashed that out of him now. He hasn't been in a decent bar fight in... shit, a decade maybe? Alright, these are the other people that I don't know, so I won't ask about them. How well do you know General Vargas? Or Snake? <laughs> Better than he'd like. Back in the day, the General was the craziest of us all. But somehow, after we brought down Base Kachice, he became the sanest. Now he's running the whole show and doing a damn fine job, while I'm still walking patrols and answering radio calls. Shows you how much ambition I got, huh? Oh yeah, so what is base? Kachice. Cochise, something. An old military facility from before the war. And the biggest fight the Rangers ever had. There was some crazy computer in there that kept spitting out robots and sending them off to kill people. We had one hell of a fight putting it down. Earned our stripes that day. Literally. That's when I became Captain Death. Wait, a, a computer was making robots? Ooh, Harper would love to get his hands on that computer. Yeah, the base Kachice AI. Don't know what was wrong with it. Broken, I guess. It thought everybody was its enemy. Wanted to kill the whole planet. <laughs> Alright. Say, listen. Vargas asked you to look into Ace's death because he thought I was too upset to be professional about it. 
He didn't want me going off half-cocked and shooting up all of Arizona looking for his killer. But I gotta find this guy. Ace and me, well, we'd been fighting side by side for nigh on 20 years. I'm not letting him die unavenged. So, well, I know it's going against orders, but if you let me tag along and be in at the kill, well, I'll help you find your feet out there. Maybe give you a few pointers along the way. I may be old and slow, but I know the waist's like the back of my hand. What do you say? I say a hell yes. Cool. No need to tell Vargas why I joined you. If anybody asks, I'm just helping you get oriented, all right? Of course, of course. Say, you actually look disturbingly similar to Helen. Oh well, that's fine. Yeah, she is very, very helpful. A uh, big reason for that is the fact that she is level 14, and we're all level 1, so yeah, she's fucking amazing. Let's take a look at her stats, I believe she's primarily... Oh my god. Oh, she's got really poor luck. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, tons of action points. Look at all that coordination. She's got 143 hit points, where we have, like, 26 to 30. Jesus. Whew. But, uh, yeah, she's got a lot of skills. Damn good with an assault rifle. Brute force, hard ass, blunt weapons, weaponsmithing, outdoorsman. So let's keep her with us as long as possible. And this... <laughs> that's Ace's wrench. Can attack diagonally. Ooh, interesting. Well, if there's any weapon she could hit hard with, it'd be Ace's wrench. Delivering righteous vengeance. Through, uh... Something that her partner used to own. It's kind of cool, but also kind of sad at the same time. Let's equip that. Oh, some faded letters. Each of these letters is faded and yellowed with age and use. To my angel is scrawled on the front in loving, if slightly messy, handwriting. I love little details like that. It's very cool. Okay, now it is officially time to go. So yeah, like I said, it's going to be a slow beginning, as you can see. It's a lot to get through, but, uh... I, I like the wordiness of the game, actually. It's certainly not everybody's cup of tea, but I figure if you like turn-based combat, you're probably going to be someone who has more patience. You know, just in general, more patience. And it certainly helps that the writing is really, really good. Even if the voice acting is inconsistent... Not that the voice acting isn't good, it is good, it's just inconsistent. Sometimes it's there and sometimes it isn't, which is a bit weird. I don't know, I guess the fact that you can hear some of what they say kind of helps create the the voice of the character. Maybe the hope is that you hear them say some stuff, then when you read the rest of their text, you'll kind of be reading it in, in their voice in your head. Or something. I'm not sure. Anyway, I want to get into one fight at least before I end the episode. So I can show you a little bit of the combat. So let's head to the world map. Enter the wasteland. Let's go. The overhead map, by the way, when you're traveling on the map, is incredibly cool. It's really, really cool. I, I'm, I've been impressed with this game in many ways. Yeah, look at that. Ranger Team Echo, this is Ranger Command. Come in. Copy. Roger, Echo One. Just making sure your radio is working. I'll be your dispatcher from here on out. I also wanted to give you a little heads up on your water situation. If you've all got full canteens, you should have enough water to reach the place. Remember, your main priority is to recover the repeater okay, okay. that Ace was carrying. Once you've got the devices, you'll be headed to... 10 4, Echo 1. That's mostly tutorial stuff, which is why I skipped it. Uh, basically just telling me about the water mechanic. So, you do have water. You do have to refill your water if you don't want to horribly die. I mean, you are traveling through the desert after all, so water is obviously, is obviously incredibly important. But uh, yeah, here's the kind of overview travel system. 
So this is the map. I'm here at the Ranger Citadel. We want to go to the radio tower. And this is how you do it. Just move as a unit. Um, very similar to, I suppose, the Fallout games. Yeah, I think the Fallout games had a similar system, right? Where you travel between places and there were chances of random encounters as you were traveling. And uh, yeah, this is the same sort of thing. So let's head on up and over to the radio tower. We're probably going to face a random encounter. It's pretty likely. Oh, here we go. Random encounter, raiders, okay. 75% chance to run, but uh, no. Let's get into some combat, shall we? Okay, it's going to be the first taste of combat. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. It's really starting off right now. Who gets the first shot? You do. Ow. God damn it. Shot Harper like in the fucking head for eight damage. Which is actually a lot. Alright. Well, my sniper only has enough AP to shoot once. Get a nice 2% bonus chance to hit. Whoa, what the hell is that? What's the white thing that showed up? I don't know what the hell that was, but anyway. Let's, uh, snipe this guy, I suppose. Not much else we can do. Takes 7 AP to shoot once. I have 8 AP. Boom! Goodbye. Alright, who's left? There's obviously more. One more there. Alright, cool. I've only got 1 AP, though, so there's really nothing I can do except end my turn. Alright, there's a cover system, by the way. Can't take cover around the cactus, apparently. Uh, let's go ahead and... I can't hit this guy because he's out of range. And it looks like he's melee as well. As you can see, he's got like a machete or something, so... Let's go ahead and move you into cover. And then put you on ambush, which is essentially Overwatch from XCOM. Same sort of idea. And yeah, I mean, since he's melee, let's just wait for him to come to us. I'm going to crouch you. Which uh, gives you a little bit more chance to evade and a better chance to hit. So it's basically like crappy cover. If you can't get into cover, this is your next best thing. Let's do that. And ambush. You are my shotgunner. You're going to blast that dude in the face. Crouch and ambush. All right, come on. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, no, you're still alive. Okay, have a shotgun blast. Goodbye. You don't have enough movement points to get over here, do you? No, I didn't think so. So yeah, here's where the 8 AP comes in handy. Saw rifles take 4 to shoot. I have 8, so I can shoot twice. And uh, the interface is actually really impressive for Wasteland 2. It's very good at giving you really all the information you need. Like this, for example, shows you the sweet spot of... Or, yeah, it shows you where the enemies that you can currently see are located within your the good and bad range of your weapon. So you can see there's one dot, which is this guy, who's located right in the center, so he's in the kind of ideal ideal spot. You can see if it's a point-blank shot, it's a minus 25% chance to hit. If it's in the sweet spot, it's just normal. And then if it's very far away, it is minus 20%. So he's in the sweet spot, let's shoot him twice. Unfortunately, because my weapon skill is not amazing this early on, my chance to hit is pretty low. And you missed both times, good job. Thankfully, though, because she's level 14, her chance to hit is practically 100%. In fact, what if I did a headshot? Eh, no, it's not worth it. Whew! I shot off his head. And Harper's bleeding. Yeah, I should mention, I, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but most of my experience was from the beta of Wasteland 2. Not from the final release version. So they've actually changed some stuff. Like, for example, I don't believe Headshot actually existed in the beta. And I don't even remember bleeding. Like, I don't think that existed in the beta. I should probably help him. Um, hold on, you're my medic. Is that going to cure you? Use uh, heals. Doesn't remove his status effect, though, does it? Can be removed with the appropriate item. 
I, I don't think that's actually going to cure the status effect. I think you might need Surgeon to cure bleeding. Which I unfortunately don't have a Surgeon. Could you please stop bleeding? Here. Let's see if that doesn't. I think she's going to heal him, though. Yeah, shit, it didn't stop him from bleeding. Damn, that's nasty. That's really, really nasty. Jeez. Well, nothing I can do about that. Loot the bodies. Med kit, go to my medic. Pistol ammo, go to the person with the pistol. Junk. Junk. Alright, time to leave. Where is the exit? It's all the way up here. So let's go ahead and get to the radio tower before I call it for this episode. Now, I believe there's an oasis very neat. Oh! Okay. <laughs> Got like two feet before we encountered more enemies. Alright. Let's go! Keep farming the experience, I suppose. Okay, cool. This time they're not attacking me right um, outright, so I actually have time to get my people into place. Let's reload their weapons. Probably best to open up with a sniper. So you can actually disable having everybody uh, grouped together, which is very helpful when you want to set people up before the start of a fight. So I can put her in a crouched position, for example. Um, she stay crouched? No, if you move, she becomes uncrouched. All right. So you don't want people to be shooting, th like you don't want your team members to be shooting, kind of through your other team members to get to the enemy, because it actually can cause friendly fire, as I've recently discovered. And not just for just having a shotgun, but even anything. If you're shooting an enemy and there's a friendly person in the way, you can have friendly fire, which is very unpleasant. So I'm trying to set everybody up so they don't shoot over each other. Alright. Let's have the opening shot. Snipers have incredible range, although not quite that far range. As I've just discovered, let's move a little bit closer. Alright, there we go. Open fire. And you missed. It's okay, we can take another shot. Boom! fucking love snipers. Alright, one action point left. Can't do anything. Now, let's see. Uh, I th they're probably melee. No, no, you have a weapon, don't you? Yeah, it looks like a pistol. Looks like there's two enemies. Semi-automatic. That's weird. This person's little display card won't pop up, but I think they maybe both have pistols. In other words, we should perhaps get into cover. So let's put her... Crouched and ambush. I'll just put you... Crouched and ambush. Same for you. Alright, come on. Oh yeah. You're gonna get a shotgun blast to the face. Enjoy! Oh, no, didn't quite move far enough. Alright, see, like, for example, what? The camera's going all weird for some reason. I think it's like hitting this thing up here. Let's move it over here. Nope, it's still weird. I don't know, whatever. Uh, so, for example, this guy right now. If I shot this guy, it would be a very bad idea because he'd be shooting right over Yulia, which means I would probably hit her. Also, are you in cover? Oh, you are in cover, but I think you're only in cover from that direction. 
So that's kind of irrelevant to us. So, let's just move and then shoot. Oh, nice. And done. Reload everybody. Sweet. Let's see what we got. Med kit, go to my medic. More pistol ammo. Is that an eyeball? Oh, it's a glass eye. Okay. <laughs> I was like, why would you take out somebody's eyeball? It's gross. Yeah, it looks like they've been killing people. Here. Look at this. Jesus. They propped him up like some trophy. What happened here? Why did this have to happen? Fucking massacre. Alright, see if we can make it to the radio tower. I'm actually surprised I'm encountering so many enemies, because Angela has decent outdoorsman skill, which, let's see. Yeah, it's used to primarily to avoid random encounters while traveling on the world map. Although maybe it doesn't make it less likely to encounter them, but maybe it just gives you a higher chance to actually escape from them if you press the run option. Because that's 75%. I don't know. Anyway, I believe an oasis is very close, which has... Oh! Horrible radiation. Yeah, so this is where we can refill our water. There we go. There's a bunch of radiation, which we can obviously not pass at the moment because we don't have any radiation suits of any sort. I believe we're almost there. Yep, almost there. <laughs> look at this. Once I get close here, it's going to look so cool. Wait for it. That is so fucking cool, the way the title just gets, like, burned into the map. Yeah, this overhead map is really cool looking. I've been impressed with this game uh, quite a bit by its its UI and how fluid it is and just how good it is. It just, it controls really smoothly. I was, frankly, expecting it to be more clunky. When I think of turn-based games, I don't think of easy-to-use interfaces, but uh, this one has a really good interface. All right, let's go into the radio tower. I seem to have forgotten how to actually go into the radio tower. Oh, there we go. Roger that, Echo One. When you reach the area where Ace's body was found, give it a good going over. The folks that picked him up said it looked like he crawled there. Maybe you can find some tracks leading to where he was attacked. Copy? 10-4, Echo One, and check in immediately with any new info. Those repeater units are a top priority. Ranger Command out. Alright, so we have arrived at the location where Ace was murdered. And as we can see, that is probably his blood. Yeah, some bad stuff went down here. Alright, well, I think I'm going to end this episode here. I think that's a pretty good overview. It's a good start, nice introduction to all the characters. And the overall game, and showed a little bit of the combat. Next episode will, of course, be a lot more meaty. Get into more stuff, less introduction. But, uh, yeah. That has been the first couple tiptoeing steps in a journey of a thousand. Actually, probably more like a bajillion. Especially if you consider how many steps they take, multiplied by the number of team members you have, when walking from place to place on the overhead map. That would actually be a lot of steps. But, uh, yeah. So there's been the introduction to all our characters. Harper Overton. Computer Hacker Dude. Helen Veronese. Veronese. Sniper. Theodore Flint. Mr. Talker Guy. Also Assault Rifle Guy. Yulia Vasiliev, my shotgunner, and the newly recruited Angela Death. 
the incredibly overpowered high-level person who is probably going to be solely responsible for the reason we live, because if we didn't have her, I'm pretty sure we'd all be dead. Yeah, this is going to be a long series, and I'm really excited for it. It's going to be so much fun. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.